Aloha, everyone. My name is Pastor Art. If you didn't get to meet me, I'm looking forward to everything that God has for us today. Did you know, many of you already do, that this is Memorial Day weekend? And Memorial Day is very, very, very special here in the United States of America. For those of you who maybe have lost track of it, it is a day to commemorate, to honor, and refuse to forget those who have laid down their lives in military service for our country. These men and women have defended our great country and the foundational core values of the United States of America, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I want to take a moment right now and pray for those who have served in our military and those who have given the ultimate sacrifice. Father, we come before you right now and we pray that you would bless every family that's ever been involved in military service. And for any families that are listening to me right now that have had members of their family, not just recent, but in time and in history, lay down their lives for this country, I pray, Lord, that you would touch their lives and you, you would stir in them that we Americans remember and refuse to forget. We continue to honor and give great respect for those men and women who have fought for the core values and this great nation. Bless them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. For some of us here today, our love is the unquenchable, unforgetting love of a wife, a child, for a fallen father, of a mother, a father, for a fallen son. For others of us, this love, while more distant, is still anguished and grieving. Ours is a love for a fallen countryman who died so that we, a free people, might live and this great nation endure. Even as we hear these words, we understand again their inadequacy. We appreciate a new Lincoln's humble wisdom at Gettysburg. When brave men die, it is their deeds, not our words, that are remembered. It is their sacrifice, not our brief recollection, that offers everlasting testimony to their love for others, and their love for us. But we're human, and today we know heartache. So we come to this place to seek the simple assurance of each other and the hope of finding a higher meaning, a greater purpose. And let us remember a final duty, to understand that these men made themselves immortal by dying for something immortal. That theirs is the best to be asked of any life, a sharing of the human heart, a sharing in the infinite. In giving themselves for others, they made themselves special. Not just to us, but to their God. Greater love than this has no man than to lay down his life for his friends. And because God is love, we know he was there with them when they died, and that he is with them still. We know they live again, not just in our hearts, but in his arms. And we know they've gone before to prepare a way for us. So today we remember them in sorrow and in love. We say goodbye. And as we submit to the will of him who made us, we pray together the words of scripture, Lord, now let thy servants go in peace. Thy word has been fulfilled. So many of you have known long months of separation from your loved ones and those young men who were separated by distance, by miles of land and ocean. Now you are separated again, not territorial, but because they have stepped through that door that God has promised all of us. They do live now in a world where there is no sorrow, no pain. And they await us. And we shall all be together again. God bless you.
Wow, what a moving, moving piece you and I just got through viewing. I am so moved every time. And I want to encourage you one more time, if I may, to continue to commemorate, never forget, and give honor to all those who have served our country and have given in the ultimate sacrifice their own lives for our country and the core values of this great nation called America. You know, I am going to be sharing in just a moment about a young man who has an incredible story, who also served in our military in the most courageous way. But before I do, as you can tell, we're in a different setting, but still it's going to be a powerful day to share with you a message that we've been talking to you about concerning this gospel. Because talking about stories, if there's ever a story changer, that story changer would be Jesus Christ. You know, Jesus came to change our stories. He came to turn our lives around. And in just a few moments, as I said, you will hear a young man by the name of Jonathan share that story with you from his perspective. But some of you, maybe like I, have not served in military, but we greatly appreciate them. And our stories come from different places. And sometimes we ask the question, how can God work in the story of my life right now with what I'm going through? You know, that's actually a very good question. And so I want to begin with someone that you all know about. His name was David. And David, although had a call on his life, but it touched his life as a young boy, he also had troubles and difficulties in his life. But he knew who the story changer of his life always was, not just to get him started, but to complete everything that God had designed him to complete. I say that because maybe some of us listening right now you know, we started off with a fire, or we started off walking with the Lord, and then we faced a few bumps or barriers, obstacles or crises that maybe discouraged us or disappointed us or completely took us off track for a while. And sometimes the adversary comes in to take away your hope, to take away uh, the dream of ever walking complete with him ever again. And that's a life in the pit of hell. What I want to bring to you is the clarity of God's mercy and God's grace on all of our lives. No one is perfect, but as long as we look to Him, He'll continue to perfect us even when we make mistakes or fall. As long as you and I desire to look to Him, the story changer, our stories will continue to be changed for His glory and for our good and the good of all humanity. David was facing a difficult time, and one time, in his latter years of his life, he made this statement from 2 Samuel chapter 22. He said, God made my life complete when I placed all the pieces before him. Think about that. David is saying, after many years of living life, not only as a great warrior who accomplished great things, one of the greatest kings of all of Israel, still remembered today by many people. That's how powerful of an influencer he was, yet he wasn't perfect. Many of you know he had moral mistakes, but even in that time, there was something called repentance where he came back to God and he asked God to forgive him. God not only forgave him, but restored him to great prominence. You see, David continued to write in 2 Samuel 22 that God rewrote the text of my life when I opened up the book of my heart. See, that's what happens when you and I come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He knows we're not perfect, but He is the only one who can perfect us. And I only share this because I don't want anyone listening to me today ever to carry shame or condemnation or guilt or these burdens that so many of us try to carry, wrongly so. That's what the adversary would want you to do. That's why the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is a gospel of hope. The hope of the gospel is that, that confident expectation of a favorable outcome. Who can give you that? I promise you today from the scriptures themselves that Jesus Christ is the only one who can change our story and raise us up from ashes. Oh, there have been many times that you and I have felt because of maybe betrayals or abandonment or a crisis or any such situations that we felt that there's just, there's just no more in us to take another step. There's not enough in us to take another breath. And we feel like we want to give up. 
And I want to say to all of you, the story changer is still working on your behalf. He is the God of hope. In the hope of the gospel, the God of hope is revealed. You see, it says in Romans 15, 13, Now may the God of hope fill you with joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Listen, I realize that some of you right now might feel that you don't have another breath of hope in you. I, I do realize that some of you right now, because of a financial challenge, might feel like, you know, you've just been depleted uh, of all strength. I realize that some of you may have had some, some bad news come your way. But please also realize this, the God of hope knows where you are and knows how to reach you. In the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of hope is there for you. You know, I often say, I've said it for so many years, that God can change the story of a city by changing the story of one person at a time. You know, you are that person today, and this could be your time. You say, Pastor Art, why do you say it could be? Because the only key that you need to act upon is belief. All you have to do is believe. God supplies us with the power. And you know what this does? You know what the gospel of hope will do for you today as a father or as a husband or someone coming out of a, a bad relationship or someone that just heard some bad news? God reinvigorates us by the power of the Holy Spirit, a hope that abounds in us if we just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and the promises that he has given us. And that begins to produce in us vision. You know, it says in Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, no redemptive revelation of God, the people perish. See, that's what the God of hope and hope does for you. This is not just man's kind of hope. This is the gospel hope, the God of hope that is trying to tell you today that you're not alone. I know some of you listening to me right now might feel like you have no vision. You have no tomorrow. You have no breakthrough coming your way because you might feel alone, but you're not alone. And maybe God is using me like he used a donkey with Balaam that Balaam would listen to the advice. So he sent a donkey and the donkey spoke. That's what the Bible says. And Balaam was saved from a premature death. Now, I'm sharing you, maybe I'm like that donkey. I don't mind being posted up that way as long as you hear what's being said, that you're not alone, that God has not forgotten you, and God has not given up on you. And even though you and I may have made some mistakes, he does not give up on his people. You are not alone. God will not leave you alone, but he's here to rewrite your story. See, God alone can rewrite any person's story. You know what we do sometimes? And isn't this true? We try to justify why our stories cannot be rewritten. I've, I've done too much of this, and I've gone too far that way, and I've gone too far this way. And listen, it's not like God is surprised and he wakes up one day, oh my gosh, I didn't expect that to happen. I want to encourage you today that God, the God of hope, the God of hope, the God who loves you unconditionally, who extends his two hands of grace and mercy, to you is saying as he said to David I want to rewrite your story see remember I remind you again in 2nd Samuel 22 David said God rewrote the text of my life my broken life my my life with the mistakes with the mistakes and sins of my life God rewrote the text of my life when I opened the book of my heart and that's what God is referring to you you know, text refers to things that have been written about our past, written about our past, that only God can rewrite with his word that has to do with your future. Listen, I understand. We've all walked down that path that we sometimes think no one else understands what I'm going through. Well, there might be people around you and around me and around us that don't always understand everything. But the God of hope, Jesus Christ himself, understands it all. This I do know about us. 
Everybody has a story, right? We all do. We all have something written about our past, something we try to bury, something we are grieving about still, something we're not very happy about. So we all have a story, good and bad and indifferent. The second thing I know is that not every story that everybody has is a story that everybody wants. You know, I've been there. Yes, I've been there. I'm sure you've been there and others you'll know and continue to meet have been there. But the good news of the gospel of hope is that God doesn't want us there. Even though we've been there, that's why he brings hope. Again, hope is that confident, joyful expectation with a favorable outcome. The favorable outcome is that he is our story changer. And this is the third thing you need to know, is that every story is important to God. And I know some of you listening to me right now say, Pastor Art, you know, are you just are you just putting me on here? Are you playing with me? Are you just getting, uh, are you just saying things because you think you need to? No, no. No, I'm, I'm talking to the person that's hurting the most or the person who's not hurting at all right now. I'm talking to humanity. I'm talking to every person, whether you're on the mountaintop or in the lowest of valleys. Your story is important to God. You were born with the purpose in this world. You're not a leftover and you're not forgotten. And the fourth thing you need to understand is that Jesus is the story changer. And that is the gospel of hope. See, Jesus came to change our story from being lost to being found, from being unsaved to being saved, from living without any promises whatsoever to living now in him promise-filled, from being hopeless to being hope-filled, from being powerless, drained and empty to being powerful happy and satisfied, from being broken to be made whole, from being captured by an adversary that we did not know even existed to being redeemed from the clutches of the enemy. That's why you need to know that the God of hope is here for you today. And that's why Paul says in Colossians 1.23, do not be moved away from the hope of the gospel. The hope of the gospel is what gives you strength. And before we open up, with a story that's, that's really gonna help you to put this in context in your own personal life. I remind you of Hebrews chapter six in the Amplified Classic version. It says, hold fast to the hope appointed before us. Did you know that you've been appointed with hope? The day you were born again, you have the God of hope that gave you his hope, not just the kind of hope you used to know before Jesus. This is a new kind of hope, a hope that does not disappoint, a hope that comes from the God of hope to you, to your doorstep, right into your, your heart, right into your entire life. It goes on to say, now we have this hope as a sure and steadfast anchor of the soul. It cannot slip and it cannot break down under whoever steps out upon it. That includes you and I. You know what I want you to do today? I personally want to encourage you I want to encourage you to step out on the hope of the gospel. I want to encourage you to trust him as you never have before. I want to encourage you to let go of all your excuses, let go of all of your mental exercises that I've had before as well, reasons why, arguments why I cannot trust the Lord or why I cannot trust in this promise or why it cannot be for me. Get rid of all of it because only you can decide to do that. But the day you decide, he steps in for you. That's why Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind you, the written things, forgetting those things which are behind you, reaching forward to those things which are before you. And that's exactly what a young man by the name of Jonathan Vasquez did. He had a situation arise in his life while serving in our military, doing everything he knew to do right. And he needed to reach out in a time of trial and a time of extreme difficulty to the God of hope, the only one who can change his story. And this is what he'd like to share with you. Part of this story. Now listen to this.
Not a year goes by where I don't remember that day. It was the day that I got shot and I almost lost my life. It was November 22nd, 2006, and I was with the Marines in Iraq. Uh, we were in unfamiliar territory and we were tasked on our first patrol to go and reconnaissance the area, uh, basically to scout out the land. Uh, we didn't know the area too well. All we had were maps and a GPS. And so that day was filled with a lot of anxiety. We knew that the enemy was there. Nothing can substitute preparing for a mission. Uh, everything about you has to heighten. Your alertness, your communication, your focus. Um, you can lose your life or the lives of your colleagues. So as we traversed the area and we approached the town, and the town was alive, it was midday, those kids playing, those business going on, and all of a sudden I noticed that a motorcycle was driving away from us uh, pretty fast. And that kind of got my senses up a little bit. I knew something wasn't right. Uh, and then as we continued to walk down this ravine, maybe five minutes, I look up and it's a ghost town. Everybody's gone. There's no kids, nobody's out in the streets. And that's when I knew that something wasn't right. You know, I started getting a, a bad feeling. I knew it was the Lord. He was prompting me. And that's when I began to pray. I prayed Psalm 91. I said, Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus. I charge your angels to keep us in all of our ways. And then I said, Amen. And maybe about a minute or two later, that's when everything changed. The first round hit about 10 feet in front of me. You, kind of like a deer in a headlights look. I didn't know what to do. Within a second of that, the second round hit and it was five feet in front of me. And that's when I began to turn to run. That's when they fired the third round. Roger, we're taking fire right now. I just got shot and uh, all of us are now down. It's kind of hard to describe you know, what that feels like, but the force of it pushed me forward and I just remember screaming. It felt like a sledgehammer hit my back. Uh, it's in that moment where all the thoughts started racing through my head. You know, uh, I'm gonna die. You know, I'm bleeding out. Uh, everything you can possibly think of. You know, the worst case scenario. So while I was being bandaged up, that's when they started unleashing uh, machine gun fire on us. Uh, the bullets were so close. It was, they were whizzing by our heads. You can see them uh, impacting the dirt all around you. And we were hugging the ground. Uh, we couldn't stand up or the bullets would hit us which later I ended up contemplating why didn't they open up on machine gun fire on me. When they shot at me, it was single rounds. And I know it was the Lord. I know it was His protection and His deliverance. Whatever was happening on that side, God was preventing it from happening to me. And that's why I'm here today. In the middle of that firefight, as the rounds were flying by, there was a helicopter that was en route to pick me up and to get me out of there. I wanted to stay with my guys and fight, uh, but I had no choice. And as I was flying on that 20 minute ride, I was kind of just in a surreal moment. You know, did this really happen? Did I get shot? Uh, was my life almost taken? You know, you kind of all these emotions and thoughts just flowing through you. It's, it's difficult to describe. The bullet, it missed my spine by an inch. It missed my pelvic bone. It went around it and missed everything. No vital organs were hit. Uh, nothing was hit. I was perfectly fine. All I needed to do was recover there at the hospital. You know, and that's when I started getting all these emotions, you know. I had already been in an IED, an explosion. I'd been shot, you know, and we were taking casualties all the time. Uh, kind of had um, just a breakdown, you know, where I didn't want to go back out, you know. But you kind of push those thoughts down because you have men that are out there still fighting, you know, and you don't want to let them down. You want to be with them. Three days later, I flew back to my unit and lived to fight another day. I'm really grateful for the vision of this house. If it wasn't for the vision of this house and being connected and being planted, I don't know where I'd be. First of all, I had a life group leader, Chris Tassi. He really helped disciple me and mentor me even before the deployment. I remember being in his life group and he was always encouraging us and we went through the pre-encounter classes together and even before the deployment, I was able to go to an encounter. And it was through that whole process of me understanding the cross, me understanding reconciliation, forgiveness that really helped me to get through that deployment. 
he was there for me also during the deployment. We didn't have a phone all the time. We didn't have access to the internet. But if I had a satellite phone or if I was at a facility that had phones, I was calling my family, but I was also calling my leaders. Even I was leading men out there in the spiritual walk with Jesus. We had internet connection. I was jumping on the computer to watch Word of Life service that was uh, showing live online. Having the feelings of abandonment, like I was out there on my own, like even questioning, like, God, where are you? Our battalion, we lost 23 uh, Marines and a sailor. They were close friends of mine. And it was in those times where, you know, I really couldn't talk to family, but I had a life source. I had a lifeline. And that was a life group. I remember there was this one instance where I talked to this leader and, and he had said, wait one second, Pastor Art is walking right by. And I remember they handed him the phone and he had said, he had asked me how I'm doing. And he said, I'm going right into service and I'm gonna lift you up in prayer. And I remember just being in awe that I got to talk to my pastor. I left as a life group leader. I didn't really know what that fully meant because I was going straight into deployment. But when I came back, I had a responsibility now to disciple people the way that I've been discipled. You know, the way my life group leader, Chris Tossi, at the time discipled me. The way that leaders answered their phones and they would just listen and they would pour in the Word of God to me. Now it was my turn to pour out the Word of God into others that needed it. About five years after me being a 144 leader, I was promoted to being a G12 leader. And that is on Pastor Art's team. That's a surreal moment, you know, to be able to call to that level of responsibility. Uh, but it's an honor as well. Psalm 92, uh, verse 13, it says, Those who are planted in the house shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bear fruit in old age. They shall be fresh and flourishing. So I'm grateful to Pastor Art and Kuna for upholding the vision, the Great Commission, to win souls and make disciples. I'm grateful to our to our church family. I'm grateful to all those leaders who poured into my life when I was an attender. And they saw me all the way through to being a leader of leaders. Thank you to Pastor Cesar and Claudia Castellanos for believing in our pastors and for, for uh, letting that anointing flow downward onto us. We're recipients of the blessing of that anointing that's on their life. I'm honored to be one of Pastor Art's G12 leaders and I'm truly excited because this G12 vision is changing people's lives. We're about winning souls and making disciples. Wow, what a great story. Thank you, Jonathan, for sharing that story with us. You know, I'm sure you were all encouraged, especially on this Memorial Day. You know, again, we want to speak to all the men and women that have served, or maybe you know somebody or have a family member that's laid down in the ultimate sacrifice their life for this great country. We're not forgetful. We want to honor them on this weekend, and we want to encourage you to continue to do so. And Jonathan, as he was serving there, as you just heard, was serving, doing everything right. And, and a situation happened, and he called out to the God of hope. And not only did he call out to the God of hope, God began to change his story. He was single then. Now he's married with a beautiful child and he's moving on now as a family because God restored his story in so, so many, many ways, as he does all of us. He doesn't, God never just works in one area, but he needs to start in one area, as he did with Jonathan, as he did with me, as he did with every person that's ever called upon the Lord. What's that area, Pastor Art? The heart. You see, if God can't come into your heart, then he can't change your story. And that means that we have to be willing to surrender our lives to Him. And today, many of you listen to me. Do you know you need the God of hope? As I do. Still do every day of my life. But He's there for me. And now He lives in me. And that's His guarantee to you that if you pray to Him and believe in Him, the Bible promises that He comes and lives inside your heart. He changes our hearts forgives us of our past. He gives us new life. In that, He changes our story. I want to pray for those of you that are listening to me right now. Right now. And maybe you're in that place that maybe you had no more breath of hope. No more next step. 
No more next stop because the things have gone on. Let's let Jesus do something in your life that you've not been able to do on your own. You've pulled every lever. You've pressed every button. You've done everything you know to do. And still you find yourself not completely satisfied. Because only a personal relationship with the Son of God can save a man's soul. And all you have to do is believe in Him. Say this after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you now to come into my heart. To forgive me of all my sins. Forgive me of my past. Grant me your salvation. Give me new life. Jesus Christ, I believe that you are the Son of God. As Scripture says, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. I need your help. I need your salvation. Come now as I receive you as my Savior into my life. I believe that you died on the cross for me and for all people. But on the third day, you rose again from the dead that I might have new life in you. Thank you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. You know, as simple as that prayer was, it really is so powerful. I sincerely want you to communicate with us uh, either if you're on Facebook, you know, you can send me a note right now. I mean, right now, I've made that decision. Just type it in, you know, or on YouTube or on, you, by email or any other format that you'd like. I certainly want to encourage you that this is the best decision you'll ever make. You do not make an emotional decision. You made an eternal decision. And secondly, I do want to pray for all of you who are going through a, a very difficult time right now, challenging time. I didn't come to you as the donkey reference I referred to you earlier with just a message and words. I came to you because the God of hope has opened my heart to share with you today on this format. And my prayer for you is that your heart would be open because I know God has always been ready. And no matter how difficult it might look, I want you to be encouraged today that you're not alone and you're not forgotten. And he's not overlooked you in any way. Allow me to pray for you and your family. Father, I come before you right now and I pray for every person that's watching on whatever format or platform they might be listening to this message today. And this is a day, Lord, where men want to just step aside and we want you to step right in the middle. I ask, Lord, that you would be clear in your presence, in your power, in your hope, in your goodness to every person right now that is asking for your help. No matter who they are or where they come from, Lord, you told me and directed me to tell them that you are their story changer. And then only you can change their story and in you we put our trust. Lord, whatever situation might be before them, however impossible it may look, show up in their physical bodies, in their marriages, in their families, in their finance, in any area there are no limitations to your salvation. Show yourself strong and be the one who is glorified in each and everyone's life. Thank you for your unconditional love for every person listening right now. In Jesus' name, amen. You know what? I expect God to do something great in your life. I really do. I know God answers prayer and he loves you and he's working right now on your behalf. Now. On behalf of the family of World Life Christian Center on this beautiful Memorial Day weekend, don't forget to celebrate our military. Don't forget to give them the honor that they well deserve. 
And today, I also celebrate all of you who have made a decision and have received that prayer because God is working on your behalf. Thank you for allowing me to come into your life, into your home, on whatever platform. We love you. From the family of World Life Christian Center here in Honolulu, Hawaii, we are a church you can call home. Aloha.